Hello everyone, uh, we are today going to take you through data exploration. Course 3 was about data needed in MMM. Remember, we talked about four categories that we need to be collected as part of any marketing mixed modeling project. As a reminder, KPI, marketing, media, and external factors. Now that I have received all this data, it is very, very important that I take my time to explore it, chart it, and analyze it. And that's exactly what we are going to cover during this course. Going back to our standard marketing mixed modeling workflow, we are still in phase two, where we are meant to understand and analyze the data that we have collected post the sending of the data request and the reception of all the data from, from the internal teams or from the clients. Data exploration, also called data validation, is one of the most important steps as well in, your, in the execution of your marketing mix modeling project. In fact, it is very, very important that you take time to look thoroughly at the data that you have received and chart it in order to understand the data that you have received. Also, exploration, exploration phase is very important because you need to think about what are the transformations that you need to apply to your variables in the next stage, which is the processing stage, and those ideas about the transformation that you need to apply should come from the exploration and the validation of the data that you are doing at the exploration stage. One thing I will insist a lot on when it comes to data exploration, which is charting, charting, and then charting and charting. Actually, it's very, very important you take your time to chart your data by period, but also by cross-section or by region if the data is available. Here I can think about uh, some charts that I advise you to do or some statistics that you need, to, uh, you need to compute. For example, for every single variable, you need to look at univariate data analysis. For example, look at the mean of the variable, look at the variance, look at the standard deviation, and also compute the quartiles so you get an understanding of the distribution of the variable that you have. Another thing that you can do is to chart your independent variables or actually your marketing and media variables against your KPI or your sales because that will give you an idea about whether the variations on one variables are influencing the variations of your KPI. So correlation is a very important thing to look at. Something else that you could also do is to create the correlation function. So because correlation is about looking at the behavior of two variables at the same time. However, in marketing mix modeling, sometimes there is a delay in the response to certain marketing activities. So if you lag your independent variable of your, or your marketing variable, you can see better the correlation between that variable and the KPI that you are trying to model. Another tip that I can give you today is actually to look at your scatter plot. Because when you look at your scatter plot, you can look at the trend of the variable against, for example, your dependent variable to appreciate whether there is some kind of strong correlation between the variables that you are analyzing. In master, you can create all these charts that I was talking about and more through the second module of master, which is the explore module. And I will take you through a quick demo of how you can do that in master. In this example, we have graphed our KPI or sales data against two explanatory variables, radio and TV spent. We can clearly see from this graph Whenever we have read you on, there is some quite sales response. What I can also check as a result of that is whether this pattern that I'm seeing at the national level is similar when I look at my other cross sections, for example, the other accounts. So I can flick between the different accounts as you can see here. The other thing that I can also do is to check my univariate statistics, average, standard deviation, and quartiles. Let's look now at the size of the correlation between radio activity, TV, and sales. We can see that we have a 25% correlation between TV and sales. One of the questions that I can ask myself here is that correlation is like the degree or the extent of a relationship at time t. But what happens if I lag my TV variable? In other terms, what I am looking at here is to explore whether there is any carryover effect. 
to do that, I can move to the correlation function and I can clearly see that as I lag my TV variable, the correlation between TV and sales is augmenting, which suggests that I need to create an ad stock in order to model this customer behavior that is specific to the data set that we, are, we have at hand here. The last thing I'm gonna do is to look at the scatter plot. And here I can see that there is a linear pattern between my radio activity and my sales. And when I look at the other explanatory variables, like for example, unique weekly visitors, it seems that we still have this linear pattern. So the objective from this session or the explore module is to make sure that you slice and you look and you analyze your data from different angles so you know exactly what are the hypotheses that you want to test as part of the next step and also better understand the data that you have received and that typically comes from different sources and in all shapes and forms. This course was about giving you some hints about how to explore your data and what are the typical charts that need to be constructed as part of this phase. Next course would be about data processing and transformation and we will explore together all the transformation that needs to be done as part of your marketing mix modeling project. See you next course.